So what if this whole story was best understood is something that's happening within you and within me? What if all the characters of the story are meant to portray facets of our human experience? And the facets of our human experience that, that they are portraying are said symbolically in ways that were natural to the people who told the story. And you find in many ancient stories that there are characters who are telling us something about our human experience. And there are many words and concepts that we have today that they didn't have words and com concepts for in ancient times. Psychological concepts, for instance. And nonetheless, when you're willing to see the story as being about an individual as well as humanity, let's say, as a whole, um, there are profound things being said. We may object that the Lord God is portrayed as something separate from all the other characters. It sounds in the story like our own sovereign being is somehow different from ourselves. But if you think about it, isn't that what happens in the human experience? And if this story was designed for people who were having this experience, isn't it reasonable that the sovereign self was depicted as something separate? And by the way, all the other characters in the story are depicted as separate entities too. But it's not hard to think that they all compose one reality of the experience of self. Now, there are actually two trees in the midst of the garden. There's the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the one they were instructed not to eat was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There's been so many crazy things that have been said about this story most of which I don't believe. For instance, one of the myths about the story is it's about sex. You know, that was the big discovery. Another is that they became wise, which you could kind of get from the story, and the naming of the fruit of the, or the naming of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I want to suggest to you that there's another name for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it's the tree of how things are going. It's the tree of how things are going and whether or not you like it. And what's being said in this story is that how things are going doesn't belong in the hands of our own mind and heart. It belongs in the hands of our own sovereign being. But that's different. It doesn't belong in the hands of how you feel about it and then what you're going to do about how you feel about it, to change it and make it be something that will make you feel better. I could devote the rest of my life to trying to make my hurt heart feel better to heal all the wounds of my past, to never let those things happen again, to make myself comfortable. Or I could acknowledge what's happening and have understanding of what's happening and say, yes, I understand. I see and I understand. And this brilliant mind is here to live. And to live, I'm here to create and to invite my own heart, maybe my own hurt heart, into creation. Yeah, I know it hurts, but what is the heart here to do? In the face of all that, the heart is here to bring unconditional love, the power of creation into the world 
to be a partner to the genius mind. 